Hello, John Serrato here, coming to you from the Parsons of the Manchester First Baptist Church. And uh, we're happy to share God's Word from the Book of Romans. And we've been talking about hope. That is the kind of hope we need every day in every situation. To, to That expectation, that positive trust in the Lord that He's in control. That kind of hope. Not some empty vein, oh, I hope so stuff. No, this is... This is based on his promises and on his word. Last time we looked at Jesus and how he used the word of God in the time of most severe temptation. The devil tempted him every which way, and Jesus answered each time by quoting scripture. Now, if Jesus used the scriptures as a weapon against the devil, it's an example for us. And we need to stay in the Word of God. I'm not saying you need to quote Scripture to the devil. I don't even pay attention to the devil. I just ignore him totally because Jesus said he wouldn't let him get near me as long as I'm obedient. So I let the Lord take care of him. But uh, I, I need the Scripture to keep me hoping in every situation. Not just hope of heaven, that's settled. But this is every situation. And in um, Matthew Chapter 24, uh, the Lord Jesus said this, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall never by any means pass away. Would anybody dare say that? My words will never pass away. In other words, somehow what Jesus taught and what he said and even when he used the Old Testament and quoted it, and every word that Jesus spoke is, is fixed. Why? Because it originated with God. Because he only spoke what he knew came from the Holy Spirit and from God. He said, the words I speak to you are not mine, but his who sent me. He said that several times. And, and he just was a, a, a total instrument of the Father as a human to show us God in human flesh. And that's exactly what Paul says. God became flesh. God, he took on flesh. And so then, here's another scripture. This is Psalm 119, verse 89. And it says, Forever, O Lord, forever. Oh, forever is a long time. It's forever. Never ends. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Can you believe God? Can you believe uh, the prophet when he says, Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Is God a man that he should lie? You going to believe that? You better. He says in Isaiah chapter 10, uh, the, the Lord, or, I mean chapter 55, and this is a great passage of Scripture. Isaiah chapter 55, he says, the Lord says this. Um, he says, Of whom hast thou been afraid or feared that thou hast lied and not remembered me, nor laid it to thy heart? Have, ha, have not I held my peace even of old? And thou fearest me not. And so the Lord, the Lord here was saying, you know, he says, I've revealed myself. I've spoken. You've heard me speak. And yet you're afraid because you're not really believing what I said. So in chapter uh, 55, beginning with verse, um, uh, let's see, where are we? Mm -hmm. uh, verse 10. He says, As the rain comes down from heaven and the snow and returns not thither, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, now, when he says that, he's talking about the Word of God. And that every 
word in the Bible is, is uh, originates with God, through humans, with human styling, human information, human ideas, uh, all kinds of different things, history, poetry, uh, prophecy, doctrine, uh, gospel, everything, but it's from the Lord somehow, and, and that's the way it turns out, and you know that once you read it and believe it. He says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. And remember, Jesus said, Thou sh uh, every man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Boy, sometimes I just need a verse of Scripture. I need to read the Bible or read a, a Scripture card, and I say, Lord, I just want something from your mouth. I want you to speak to my heart. And he does. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and shall prosper in the, th in the thing whereto I sent it. Then he says, you will go out with joy and peace, and the mountains and the hills will break forth in singing. So we're talking about hope that gives us joy and peace. That's how we started this whole little series in Romans. Joy and peace in the Holy Spirit's power. And he says, my word shall not return. In other words, God says, if you will expose your heart to my word on a regular basis, if you will meditate in my word, if you will believe it and trust and fill your mind with the word of God, he says, it will produce fruit. Just like the rain and the snow comes down and causes things to grow and you have food and life and without rain and snow, you wouldn't have any life on the planet, and, and he says, my word is like that. It brings spiritual life, spiritual strength to your heart. So he says, it won't return empty, it won't return void. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 25, he says, being born again, being born again. Now Peter knew what born again meant because he was born again. Uh, years before this, he had sat and heard Jesus tell Nicodemus, you must be born again. At that point, he had no clue what was going on. He didn't understand it any more than Nicodemus did. Born again? Nicodemus says, how can you be born over again when you can enter your mother's womb a second time and be born and Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wants to blow. You hear the sound of love, you don't know where it comes from. So is everyone born of the spirit. There's an invisible power of the Holy Spirit. The world has no clue. Even Christians can't see it because it's beyond hence sense knowledge. It goes from God directly to the Spirit, the knower, and in our hearts we just know that he's forgiven us, that the work of Christ on the cross covers my lifetime of sin. It's been blotted out because I'm trusting Jesus. That's the word of God. That's it. So Peter says, being born again, now he knows about it many years later, he's been preaching it, seeing it work, seeing thousands come and be born again with the Spirit of God delivered from all kinds of sin and, and even sickness and heartache and misery and corruption, people made pure and clean and holy. I saw that in mass. I saw that back in the 70s when, when my church grew from 40 to 400 in a, in a matter of a couple of years. People off the streets, every kind of sinful, horrible background, these young people became squeaky clean born again, new life, new people. They didn't even uh, want to think of their old life. It was beautiful. I still hear from them 30, 40 years later. They're still living for God. How wonderful. So anyway, he says here, Peter says, being born again, not of corruptible seed. That's human sperm that uh, you're born by human sperm and the egg and you grow and you, and then it, you die. <laughs> it's corruptible. And your body goes into the grave and it becomes corrupt. It rots. <laughs> and that's and not very pretty picture, but that's, that's corruptible seed. He says, we're born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth, which is alive with eternal life not just physical life, eternal life, the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. 
abideth forever. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will never pass away. He that believeth on me now possesses everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed out of death into life. That's you. You've trusted Christ. Rejoice. Keep your hope alive. Don't let the situation in the, in the nation or in your own life or in your own family or all around, don't let those things kill that sweet trust and hope in God's promises who cannot lie. Amen. Lord Jesus, bless each one who hears this word. Encourage them to know your word stands forever and your word is a word of love, power, protection, joy, and peace. In Jesus' name, amen.